Working with recycled metals, Harriet Estelle Berman creates colorful sculptures, jewelry, and decorative works. But she has a particular passion for crafting Jewish ceremonial objects known as Judaica. I would say that I'm not particularly observant Jew in the sense that I don't go to temple every Friday night. Making t the Judaica to me is a kind of personal observance. Harriet is one of 80 artists participating in a unique invitational exhibition for San Francisco's newly relocated Contemporary Jewish Museum. The Contemporary Jewish Museum has a almost 25 year history of mounting invitationals. We pick a Jewish ceremonial object. Uh, in the past, we've done uh, Kiddush cups, Hanukkah menorahs, spice boxes. Uh, and this year we decided to do the Seder plate for Passover. My Seder plate is titled Eons of Exodus. And it's about the exodus of the Jewish people through the millennium. Not just the last 100 years or 200, but since biblical times, Jewish people have moved throughout Europe. Every spring, Jews worldwide celebrate Passover, commemorating the story of the ancient Israelites being passed over by the angel of death on the eve of Exodus. Passover is one of the oldest Jewish holidays. It's first referenced in the Hebrew Bible, and it is, in essence, the story of the national liberation of the ancient Jewish people, where they were enslaved by Pharaoh in Egypt, they were taken out of Egypt by Moses into the Promised Land. The word Seder actually means order, and there is a prescribed order to this ceremonial thing that goes on for hours with a festive meal at the center of it. It centers around the Seder plate on which there are a series of symbolic foods, uh, roasted egg and roasted shank bone, for instance, that represent ancient sacrifices, some greens representing spring. Um, there are some bitter herbs that represent the difficulty of the life of the Hebrew slaves. And so that's the way that the story is enacted and everyone eats the foods and it's a very, very participatory, communal kind of event. This is the Union Haggadah that inspired the figures on the Seder plate. And my family has used this Haggadah uh, all of the years I was growing up and they still use it today. It's the book used during the Seder service to lead you through the various prayers and activities. And I wanted to use an image out of the Haggadah. And I finally decided that I would use this particular page. I knew that I wanted to have the figures go around the outside of my Seder plate. So I decided to extend it beyond the biblical narrative, which you're seeing in this image here, to include the exodus of the Jewish people throughout the centuries. So I did months of research about this, collecting old images of the way Jews were dressed throughout history. I think it's a really interesting aspect of the figures is that they're always carrying bundles throughout the centuries. And then the final figures are these women of Sudan escaping with their bundles. And this is in the 20th century. So it's like those women look just like the biblical figures from thousands of years ago. In addition to making silhouetted figures which run along all four sides of her plate, Harriet will emboss the top with designs reflecting the traditional Seder foods. This is maybe the fourth or fifth invitational that I've participated at the Contemporary Jewish Museum. Both Jewish and non-Jewish artists are invited. They are not looking for the traditional Judaica, but they're looking and open to the, all ideas. Artist Gay Outlaw uses a wide variety of materials in her sculptural work. Everything from fabric and wood to glass and burnt sugar. But for the invitational, she decided to work with cast paper. It's been a painstaking process of experimentation. I was actually raised Catholic, but my best friend uh, growing up was Jewish, and her father's favorite holiday in the Jewish tradition was the Seder dinner. And so she invited me over, as I recall, for a couple Seder dinners. And um, I remember the stories. I remember the bitter herbs. 
I remember thinking, yuck, but oh, that's really neat. I mean, I was a, a kid and I was always struck by the whole presentation and story and how engaging it was, but how humble and simple it was also. So I thought, well, paper plates go with humble and simple. It is very different from what, you know, I think most Seder plates are fancy. What I felt was that the three things on the plate that seemed to be uh, to call for their own shape were the egg, uh, the, the leaf of romaine lettuce, and the shank bone. It seemed like since it, it is made of such humble material and it is just a cast paper plate, and we do have the mold, that I should make a collection of them and present them all so that the um, nested together, they'll have more, maybe more sculptural presence. I think people are open to the kinds of sometimes irreverent approaches that people take because I think even in that, there, there's a real respect for the holiday and for the tradition. And I think particularly because uh, the Passover Seder plate has no requirements. And in medieval times, there are some manuscripts and they show simple plates. And so the fact that somebody like Gay Outlaw would do something in cast paper, you know, amongst other things, it might make you think of the fact that the ancient Israelites, when they're fleeing Egypt, you know, they were eating on the run. They were making matzah. They didn't have time to bake leavened bread. you do an invitational, the museum is taking a chance. We don't know what we're going to get. We have a sense, these artists have track records, we know what their work is like, but there are always surprises, and that's the scary thing, and that's also the really exciting thing when the works arrive. More than just a celebration for the artists, tonight's opening doubles as a fundraiser for the museum. All the works are up for sale and more than 300 people have come for a sneak preview. We have many local collectors of craft, design, contemporary art, um, and they're weighted with bated breath because um, this is new work. I think this is just wonderful and what the artist is saying about um, not having a designated Seder plate, but it's just about the movement and the story. I'm looking forward to seeing everything. I'm, I'm sure I'll see at least a few things I'd like. By the end of the evening, 25 pieces have sold. All the work will remain on view for the duration of the show, and two pieces will be awarded top prizes. One juried by art experts, the other chosen as an audience favorite. Some of these Seder plates are a little bit controversial and provocative, and, uh, and that's fully in line with, with the themes of the Passover Seder and the Seder plate. Some people talk about a Passover being a holiday of questions, and the idea of asking questions and always interrogating and trying to get more and different answers is a fundamental part of the holiday. And so if someone sees a Seder plate and they say, gee, that's interesting, and they have questions about it, and they're provoked to learn more, then uh, that's a successful experience in this museum.